the thing that strikes me the most about watching a movie like Strange World is that inspiration creates even more inspiration. Like this is keeping that train going. And I wanted to ask each one of you, what was a noteworthy moment in your life when you decided that animation was what really captured your heart? That is a great question. Um, for me, I think it was when I saw Dumbo. Um, mm. You know, uh, and w you know, when I grew up, I, I or when, as I grew up, I grew up in a small town, and I would go to the theater every Saturday. That was my my theater time. I'd ride my bike there and watch whatever was playing. And a lot of times, it was you know um, that was where I first saw like Dumbo, Pinocchio, uh, Peter Pan. Uh, and somewhere along the way, I must have done some research and found out that you draw those films. <laughs> then, and so then you know, very early, probably five or six. That's I, I decided this is what I wanted to do. I, it was the 80s after school animation shows awesome. for me. Awesome, like yes. That was where I was so glued to the television and there was a lot of, there were a lot of great female adventure shows and I just, I never let it go. I still watch them. I, I, my daughter watches them now and I, that, I think that's the point for me. I love moments thinking about that, like for parents, just let your kid be glued to something even though it might mildly concern you because it, you know that <laughs> has grown into this which is that's magic that's amazing <laughs> what about you Roy you know it was i was in theater before i came into animation and i had never thought about going into animation and was invited by a group of uh, folks from Walt Disney Animation to go see a screening of Aladdin and I saw Aladdin and I went, oh my gosh, this is the way to tell a story. It's just such an amazing adventure. And so it was really Aladdin that kind of made me go, yeah, I think I, think I could work in animation. And I love the element of Aladdin too that is withstanding the test of time, almost like a Looney Tunes vibe where the way that you understand it when you were one age is different from the way that you understand it at another. Yeah in a really Robin Williams amazing way sometimes. Yeah, and we, you know, Eric Goldberg, who was the animator of The Genie, is still working with us and actually wow. worked on this film. Uh. <laughs> yeah, he did a, a splat test early on, like a 2D, because <laughs> yeah. we were, you know, that was gonna be a big thing. Like, how are we gonna move this little little critter around? And, um, and he did a, an amazing 2D test that also involved Winnie the Pooh, and I will leave it at that. Yes. <gasps> Okay. Okay. It'll be on some bonus stuff someday. It'll be on bonus. Yeah. It'll be on the bonus thing. Let's put a pin in that because this could be an all splat Q and A, by the way. But we'll, you know, I'll control myself. But what about you? Yeah, for me, my uncle would take us to the Disney Thanksgiving movie every year, and so I grew up watching Disney animated films. But it never occurred to me that that was a job. I think it all just seemed very magical to me. So I fell into animation my third year in college. I went to school to be a painter and then took an animation course and totally fell in love with creating characters and telling stories with animated characters. It's awesome. What a life. Yeah. You know, and then and you get to see this joy that you bring on the screen. I think it's a very specific kind of joy as well. I'm obviously totally biased in doing this. No, absolutely. I mean, it is like a wonder because, you know, you're you're speaking to kids from four to 104, you know, and, and, and it keeps the kid in you alive, which is really wonderful. And I felt like a real kinship with what I'm calling the pinker dactyls. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was really sad at the beginning of the movie. I was like, ah, darn. They look like the bad guys. They're actually really sweet. I think we should rename them. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I do too. That's, that's I think, the best yeah. one. I think we need to re rename them now. <laughs> You've heard it here first. This is an Academy exclusive. <laughs> so <laughs> there are so many comparisons being made to, of course, like Jules Verne and just this incredible element of explanation, exploration that's really like ignited everyone's in imagination. But I'm wondering if there was something of a hidden influence that you had in mind along with Kui that was surprising as far as the movie goes because it's not just an exploration movie, this is a family movie. This yeah, I, I, um, I don't remember this, Kui tells a story, uh, but evidently when he first came in, we met, um, I pitched the movie as Indiana Jones meets Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> uh, so. I, um, so I guess that was in there at the beginning because, you know, I. 
I, I just love these adventure stories, the, the Jules Verne of it all, and even these specific kind of adventure stories where explorers find a hidden world. I mean, they're, you know, I just love King Kong being kind of the great cinematic example of that. But I love those kind of stories. But I also love, you know, dysfunctional family, you know, journey movies. And because this was a generation, this was going to be about three generations um, of, of a, the Clade family, I just thought that would be the, you know, we have the adventure, you know, vehicle to propel us, but then the fun family dynamics could come out as well. And so, yeah, <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing that because we all could draw upon our own kind of family stories to, to uh, put in the movie. Yeah, that's what makes films like this so relatable. We all, we've all got them. <laughs> and it, you know, I could imagine that the holiday season after this movie takes place for the family being like considerably warmer than it would have been before. So good for them. <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, Sarah, I would like to talk to you about putting this movie together as opposed to putting a television show together. And I know that you were talking about how television is like a is a newer experience to you, but what are the is there is there kind of a layman's difference that you can explain to us? Well, for uh with feature animation editing, you really are on from development all the way through to final sound mix. So I follow Don and Kui from beginning to end and I sort of run around in their shadows and make sure that everything that they ever say is never forgotten. And with uh, my understanding with television animation is it, that role is really divided between two people. You've got someone who handles the storyboard portion of it, and then you've got someone who handles the layout and the animation. So that gets divided a little bit between two people who may not work at the exact same time on the on the picture. Um, but for me, I'm this movie takes over my whole being for many years, and uh, and I and it's it's a real journey. It, it's from the seed to this beautiful, polished, finely mixed, sound designed piece. Like I really get to watch it evolve and I get to work with every single department along the way and watch how everybody pluses and brings their A game and all of this amazing creativity and just watch every little choice that's made by hundreds of people turn into this beautiful film. It's such an incredible collaborative, collaborative effort film. and. I think that my perception is that animation teams are even closer as a family than a regular crew or, or a live action crew. Um, one of the reasons for that is because a lot of movies list like the babies that were born <laughs> during yeah. the production, which I always think is so amazing. And I think like, oh my gosh, they're sort of like, a, they get their own credit in the movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's amazing because, you know, Don and I have worked together for about 25 years, you know? And now Sarah has been with us for like four years, and Amy I know from Tangled. So yeah. that's that was was that your first film, Tangled? Dinosaur. Di oh my God! <laughs> even further. Anyway, I mean it's it is like a, this repertory company, yeah. you know, and you get to know everyone's personality, their strengths, their weaknesses, and it's it's it is a little bit like the family in the film. Yeah, there's sort of a continuity of of collaboration you know, that happens because we're all together. You know, we finish a film, but, you know, we'll all come back together again and work in some capacity. And so that, that's, that's pretty amazing, you know, as opposed to kind of scattering to the wind. You know, we, you know we've, all, we've all been through the battles together, and that, you know, helps when, you know, things get dicey, as they do on all films late in production. You can always count on each other because we've all been through it together. Yeah. Now, speaking of Tangled, I wanted to ask you, Roy, what is a challenge that you had in the producing world back then that was very different on this film many years later? You know, it, it was interesting because Tangled was kind of our beginning in terms of CG animation. Yeah. And we were playing with a lot of the technical needs of that. And during um, Tangled, we literally reinvented the entire pipeline through lighting. Uh, so we didn't see any images, really, finished images, until about f six months before we released. What? Untangled. Yeah. We didn't see any, we, you know, we saw animation in a rough form, we saw, but we never saw a finished, lit 
seen till about six months before. So that was, this film was actually a joy in the sense that we didn't do any um, major technical rehab. You know, there's always little things that are going on. But we, it was really a craft, it was about the craft on this film. Uh, we, we never struggled with technical, uh, but we had these amazingly wonderful complex scenes that just you know, c continued to kind of evolve. Our, the first scene that went into production was the big chase sequence on the back of what we call the, what are they called, the hemoglobin? The, the goblin, goblin, goblin swills. Yeah. Go the goblin swills, <laughs> the goblin swills. That, that sequence was the first to go into animation and the last to come out. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was the toughest sequence in the film because you have characters running on top of other characters, which is so difficult to do. But when you were talking about collaboration earlier, this was probably the most collaboration. We always have collaboration on each of our films, but I think this was more than I've seen in the past because so many departments really needed to work together because they were influencing each other. Thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for watching out there. Thank you. Uh, thank Strange you. World is in theaters for you right now. And you need to make, make sure that everyone in your life enjoys the poop pickles. Yeah. So uh, give a hand, please, to Don Hall, Sarah Reimers, Roy Conley, and Amy Smead. My name's Gray Drake. And everyone, be well and happy holidays. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you.